Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. Thank you for tuning into my channel. Since October, I have been concentrating on imaging objects in the constellation Orion. I started out back in October imaging Lauer's Nebula, which is a nebula I'd never heard of before. And then I began to work on probably the most famous nebula in the night sky, the Great Orion Nebula. I finished up that imaging and I decided to go back and work on a project that I actually started last February. In fact, on February 3rd of 2021, um, I was imaging the Horsehead and Flame Nebula. Now, I remember that because that was the night that my first grandson was born. In fact, I took that five hours worth of data, processed it, turned it into a poster. I named it Max's Nebula, and it is hanging in his bedroom above his crib or bed, whatever you want to call it, today. And... Um, so this year I decided to go back and revisit that a little bit and add some more data. In fact, I've added a lot more data. I'm up now to a total of over 14 hours of data collected on this particular area of the night sky. Now what I thought we would do for this video is to take some time and just explore this region of the night sky. Really just go in and in this one picture, look at the numerous types of objects that are here. In fact, you're going to find out that we've got three different types of nebula in this image. We've also got some interesting objects that are um, help us to understand a little bit about star formation. And then we even see some multiple star systems in this one picture. So it's a really fascinating thing. So I thought what we do is just take some time and explore the area around the Horsehead and Flame Nebula. Stick around, I'll be right back. Okay, so here's my picture of the um, Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula. And I don't want to bore you a lot with the details about how I made this picture. Just suffice it to say, this is 14 hours worth of data. I started collecting data actually all the way back in February of 2021. I know the date, it was February 3rd, 2021, because that's the night on which my grandson was born. I collected five hours of data that night. I came back here in January of 2022, and over the course of three nights, collected another nine hours worth of data. So 14 hours worth of data collected with my Orion 80 millimeter telescope with the ZWO-183MC Pro Camera camera and the Optolong L Extreme filter. I collected the data, I processed it, but what I really want to do is focus on what we're looking at. What we see here is actually a number of really interesting objects in the night sky. And so I'm going to try to cover these quickly, but hopefully kind of capture your interest. When we look at this, uh, we see all this nebulosity, but there are actually three different kinds of nebula in this picture. Over here, this pink area of nebula right here, and this blue area right down in here, those are both reflection nebula. In other words, the, uh, um, the, the gas there is simply reflecting the light of a nearby star, and that's what we're seeing. The golden area and the reddish areas over here are emission nebula. And this, what's happening there is light is from a nearby star is exciting the gas causing it to ionize and causing it to glow. So this, this is actually glowing gas. Now the dark areas, this area that's going through here in the flame nebula, this dark area right here, and this area that forms what looks like a horse's head are actually areas of dark nebulosity. That's where the light isn't able to penetrate through, nor is it being re uh, um, emitted. And so what we're seeing is dark dust that is obscuring, actually keeping us from seeing what's behind it. Now, very quickly, I want to show you, here is uh, 
the Flame Nebula, which is really one of my favorite nebulas in all of the night sky. I just really think it's fascinating. It looks to me um, like almost like a leaf sometimes with veins that are running through it. Okay. Now, what's interesting about this is I discovered that there's actually a star cluster right behind this area of nebulosity. In fact, I want to show it to you. Okay. So let me go over here. I'm going to pull up this website. This is uh, the NASA.gov website, and the uh, NASA did a, um, a, a, uh, a study of this area using the Chandra X-ray telescope along with a lot of other instruments. And basically what it allowed them to do was to cut through all of that, ga gla uh, that uh, gas. So in other words, um, if we went back to this picture, this gas that is, is obscuring us from seeing what's inside and behind this nebula, uh, they were able to cut through and look at. And what's interesting about it is that they discovered that this star cluster that's actually in the uh, flame nebula is operating a little different. Now, star clusters are areas where new stars have been born, okay? And normally, the prevailing notion has been what would happen is the oldest stars would be here at the center, and the youngest stars would be out here around the star cluster on the perimeter. And the reason for that is, is, is as the, the gas kind of collapses, it collapses into the center and it forms stars, and then it just sort of progressively works its way out. That's not what happened in this case. In fact, in the Orion Nebula, which is right near <laughs> this area, um, the same thing is happening. The oldest stars are... Uh, actually out here around the perimeter. And so it's caused NASA and uh, professional astronomers to kind of rethink and look at, well, what's happening here? And you can read the article if you want. You can just go to nasa.gov, uh, look up the Flame Nebula, and you'll find that there are some theories as to why that is happening. I'm just pointing that out for the simple fact that it's really interesting to me that here we are looking at this nebula and scientists are still trying to figure out the mechanisms that are going on. So the universe likes to throw little um, uh, curveballs at us and say, well, just when you think you have it figured out, I'm going to show you that maybe you don't. And so something different is happening there, whether that's happening in all star clusters or just these ones, uh, will have to, you know, remains to be found. But um, it's certainly um, an area that's being pursued and looked at. Okay, so that's the Flame Nebula. Then we come over here to the star Alnitak. Now, just to give you a little bit of your bearings here, if we zoom out here, I'm in the Stellarium, looking towards the southeast. And, of course, here's the familiar outline of the Orion Nebula. Here is the belt. Alnitak is this southernmost star in the belt of Orion. Okay? And now, from an astrophotographer's standpoint, Alnitak is a total pain in the rear end. It is incredibly bright. It's incredibly difficult to try to tone down and deal with so that it's not dominating the whole picture. And as you can see in my picture, it has left a nasty, nasty halo. I've even tried to do some tricks to get that out, and this is the best that I can do. Now, enough complaining and belly aching about it. What I've learned is this is an absolutely fascinating star. Alnitak is some 33 times larger than our sun, and it shines 10,000 times brighter. It's 10,000 times more luminous than our own star. Now, it has, it has stellar winds that can reach up to 2,000 kilometers per second, and it's estimated to be about 6 million years old, actually about 6.4 million years old. Now, it was discovered in 1819 by George Kanowski that Alnitak is actually a double star. And more recently, astronomers have found a third star. So this is actually a triple star system, three stars that are orbiting around each other. And it's itself a part of a little bit larger um, cluster of stars, which is rather interesting to me, all right? So we have three stars here just in this one picture. You can actually see the double star. Here is Alnitak, 
the main component on attack. This is the other smaller star that's rotating around it, and there is an even smaller star that you can't see that's also uh, orbiting around this triple star system. Um, Alma attack's interesting because it's going to, at some point, um, it's actually already stopped fusing hydrogen. And at some point, it's going to become a red supergiant like Betelgeuse. So we are all familiar with Betelgeuse that is right up here. Here's Alma attack. Here's Betelgeuse. One of these days, Alan Attack is going to become a red supergiant like Betelgeuse. Now, we all know we're waiting for Betelgeuse to blow up. Uh, last year, it dimmed down. A lot of people are thinking, oh, this might be it. It's about to go supernova. Of course, it didn't. We, we know it's going to at some point, but we don't know when. Um, Alan Attack is going to have that same fate. And so I thought that was a little bit interesting. Okay, two more things I want to show you in this picture real quick. First of all is this area down here, this little area of blue nebulosity that sometimes I think gets a little bit neglected. Um, this is an area, again, this is an area of reflection nebula, and what's happening here is that uh, this very bright star here, light from this very, very bright star, is being um, reflected here. That star, by the way, is HD uh, 37903. It's about five times the diameter of our sun, so pretty big star, and it's and it's shining through this area of gas and it's illuminating it. Now, astronomers have noted that inside of this little area here, NGC 2023, this little area of blue nebulosity, that there's actually new stars being formed. In fact, they have found several what's known as herberg hero objects, which are small, bright patches of nebulosity. And what's happening is there's ionized gas being ejected from us as this star, uh, as the gas from, ejected from these new stars are colliding with the nearby clouds of gas. They make these little streamers that come off of them. And so that those have been observed in this area. So new stars are being born right here in this little patch of blue glass, or blue gas, I'm sorry. Now, the most obvious prominent uh, feature in this image is the horse head. And the horse head, of course, is known as Bernard 33. It is an area of dark nebulosity silhouetted against IC 434. So this red area back here is IC 434. All of that is a mission nebula. And this very dark area of nebula is forming the silhouette of this horse head over top of it. Now, I want to point out something that this was actually first observed by Wilhelmina Fleming. Now, if you're not familiar with old Wilhelmina, this is a picture of her. She worked um, at the Harvard Observatory and actually started out as the director's maid. But she ended up, her, he noticed that she was exceptionally intelligent, and he hired a number of uh, her, along with a number of other women, to be calculators and uh, computers, basically, there in the observatory. And she was given the task of labeling and, and looking at a lot of the photographic plates. And I want to show you this. I found this online. This is the actual photographic plate where Wilhelmina Fl um, Fleming was looking at, here are the three stars that form the belt of Orion. This is the area Orion Nebula down in here. And if you'll notice, right here, this little white patch, that is the Horsehead Nebula. That's the first picture of the Horsehead Nebula ever taken. Now, it was later um, observed by E.E. E. Bernard, and it was um, uh, given the, the number Bernard 33. And let me show you. This is a picture that was actually taken of the Horsehead Nebula by the Hubble. Um, and this is an infrared view and of that gas. So instead of showing dark, now we're beginning to see these these pink hues and that kind of stuff. And that's because it's able to show us this in infrared 
And again, you can see here just the fascinating area that is the horse head. All right. Well, that's my picture of the Flame and Horsehead Nebula. Now, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I think uh, uh, what I wanted to do with this video is really just hope to inspire you to, when you take pictures of the night sky, go back and do a little research. The things that we're taking pictures of are absolutely fascinating. Now, this will always have a warm spot in my heart simply because on the night that my grandson Max was born, I started taking this picture, and I'm really proud of it. Uh, an early form of this is actually hanging up over his crib, and I call this, you can call it the Flame Nebula or the Horsehead Nebula, or whatever you want to call it, I will always call this Max's Nebula. So I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope this inspired you maybe to go out and look at the night sky. Thank you for tuning in. I hope that you, uh, if you haven't done so already, that you'll click on subscribe and like. Help me spread the word about my channel. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week.